Today, I'm gonna to be taking you through a very simple pipeline on how to create 3D characters that you can use in Unreal and Blender with rigs, morph targets for animating the facial and body animation and beginner friendly. And on top of that, being Blender compatible. I've also decided to challenge myself because life isn't challenging enough and do this within under an hour. Do I achieve that? Well, keep watching to see. I just want to say a massive thank you to our sponsor today, which Pomp's is Muses Patreon. Patron. which is me. It's here I can centralize all my live streams, question and answers, and all my learning resources that I can share with you. I'm also gonna be doing a live stream of this entire process so you can watch me mess up in real time. But with all that said, let's get on with the show. My muse for today is Chun-Li from the Fantastic Street Fighter series. I want to take Chun-Li and mix her in with a Pixar Disney twist. First stop, Dali Free. At this point, I'm having an exponential crisis because Dali Free has created some fantastic imagery that conveys her power and strength really well. Next step is to whiz over to Pinterest and put in the same prompt. As you can see from the prompt, it will give you more of a diverse reference images from fan art, 3D characters to AI images. With my reference images downloaded from human and AI, I'm ready to plonk them into Pure Ref, which is a great free tool for collecting reference images. The reason why I love Pure Ref so much is because it floats on top of all your applications, which means you don't have to switch screen, you can change the opacity, you can move it around while you work, and it's free. But in a real life scenario, you actually want to spend your most time on concept and freshing out the overall idea of your character because that's where a lot of people go wrong. So don't do as I do here, take some time. Step two, creating the basic forms. With the clock ticking, I head into Character Creator. I'm gonna to have to use some kit bashing techniques to get this done. So I'm gonna be taking advantage of the fact that Character Creator has three base models in their program. And my victim today will be Camilla. I'm gonna be Fine. taking full advantage or probably abusing the fact that I don't have to do a complete face rig as well as all the morph targets for the character. It's actually in the base model itself already. Not only that, she has bones and weights and clean topology as well. Ultimately, this gives me way more time to be creative with a character rather than get caught in the technical stuff. Remember, I've got one hour to do this character and time is a ticking. We need to move in and sculpt this character. So first I need to fresh out the overall proportion of the character's anatomy. I'm gonna be using characters creators more sliders just to get a quick basic shape that I can then take into ZBrush and sculpt. This is really quick and easy to do. That took less than five minutes to get to this point. She's now all set to go into ZBrush for further sculpting. I'm gonna use the integrated Go Z button that will transfer all my layers nicely into ZBrush ready for sculpting. At the beginning of the sculpt, I primarily rely on three brushes, the move brush, the standard brush, and the smooth brush. I'm trying to steer clear from the realism and embrace a more stylized aesthetic. It's all about exaggerating the personality and bringing our character to life with each stroke. As I sculpt this character, I'm constantly moving it around into different perspectives and position. This is just to ensure that the character doesn't have a flat face and that I'm sculpting from all angles. Remember, perspective is everything. And don't forget the body as well. You can come in and use the same techniques on the body to refine the shape. We are now ready to go Z back into Character Creator and check our progress. Because we have now changed the base shape of our character, we just need to go into the morph sliders and really quickly adjust those so our eyes fit our face. We're now gonna stylize the eyelashes. I'm just going to drag and drop a pre-created stylized eyelash onto my character. You can see how quick it is to change different styles. Next is the eyeballs and as you can see, I'm just dragging and dropping pre-created assets onto our character and it fits perfectly. At this point I'm getting serious uncanny valley vibes. That is mainly because this is using a realistic character's texture. We're going to reuse those UVW maps and quickly paint them in Photoshop to be more bold and bright and cartoony with less intricate detail. I repeat this process for the other UVW maps. So far I've got head, body, legs and arm and that completes my character's UVW maps. It's now time to give her some more cartoony teeth. So I just click this mouth open button on the modifier panel and go to my content catalog and grab some stylized teeth. If you want to customize these teeth, you just go Z them straight back into ZBrush and do whatever you want with them. I'm just making use of the morph sliders again, just to reposition the teeth for a better sitting. 
At this point, I turn off the auxiliary lights and turn on the scene lighting, but this gives me a preview to see if I'm going in the right direction. I'm gonna head over to the motions panel at the bottom of the screen and switch between different facial animation profiles. This is super helpful to spot any potential issues in animating the character's face early on. Now, you might notice that these animations are based on realistic human expressions, but the thing is, I'm not aiming for realism. I want our character to have a charming, cartoony Pixar vibe. I also notice at this point, because I've made the eyes loads more bigger than the original model, the expression shapes aren't fitting the eye blink correctly. So can go in and fix that now. So I just hit F8 to open up the facial profile editor. From here I select eye blink parameter. When I push the parameter up to 100% on the left side you can see the problem here. All I need to do is reduce the parameter down until the eyelash is not going through the mesh and then I'm going to click save which is this little thunderbolt icon and it's going to save those parameters for both of the eyes. Swiftly moving on to the hair for our character. Now you can make your own hair and I would like to do some tutorials on how to do that but we are going for speed. You can jump into the Real Illusion content store and pick up high quality hair card assets. A lot of these assets actually have more sliders so you can change the look and feel of them. You can also take them apart and use bits and pieces to make a different asset of your own. And that's exactly what I've done with this character. I can also take it into ZBrush for further sculpting. With that now completed we move on to making a custom outfit. You can make clothes really quickly by masking your character and then extracting that mask. I just quickly recorded the process of doing this so you can see what it looks like. This method is free, quite quick, and you can create any outfit you want. However, I know a lot of people get stuck at this point and don't like extracting from masks, so I have a different option for you here. Behold, the ultimate kit bashing in clothing. This is the Esset preset clothing pack from Slava, and I've been a massive fan of his work on the Blender market for a while. So he's an independent developer, he has created this huge asset pack here. These are all pre-made assets. You can just drag and drop them into Blender. I'm gonna take one of these clothing of item and show you how quickly and easily you can kit bash it onto your 3D model. Simply just export the file as an FBX. Back in Character Creator, we just go to Create and go to Accessories and we just import that dress FBX we just saved. Click on Open. And there she is. We just need to position it roughly on the character. Now the positioning of the dress doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just roughly positioning it here. It doesn't matter if the mesh penetrates the character whatsoever. We're going to be fixing that in ZBrush in a second. So let's click on Go Z. From here I just make sure that the dress is selected in this sub tool and that I've got the move tool. Essentially I then just push and pull the dress so it's not going through any of the mesh. So we're we going to spend hours sculpting this dress to this body. No, we going to use dynamics. You will find the dynamics up here. If you go to this little dock symbol over here, just left click and drag it over to the left side. So ensure gravity is turned off and then come over to contract and just turn that on. Turn on collision volume and then run simulation and then use the smooth brush to smooth all your sins out. I then use the move tool to shape the dress to how I want it to be. I then figure out how I'm going to lower the topology and I do this by going to the Z remesher. So I make sure adapt is switched on and I click on half. This essentially means every time I Z remesh it, it's going to half the amount of polygons that I have. High poly, bad, low poly, kind of good. I just keep Z remeshing until I got down to a level that I'm happy with the topology and it's retaining the shape of the dress as well. The Z remesh has gone a little bit mad and gone through my mesh so I just use the move tool without X symmetry on and just push those bits out. We're now going to go in and add some trim detail to this dress. If you go to the brush and select curve tube snap and just simply drag and draw it around your edge. Okay so let's quickly create a belt for our character. So go to sub tools and underneath sub tools there's an option saying append so click on that and we're going to select cylinder 3d from the list and that will pop the cylinder 3d into our scene use the move transform tool to scale up and position your cylinder 3d around your character kind of where you want the belt to be i'm just going to switch the poly frame mode on so i can see how many polys there are to this mesh and holding down shift and control i'm just going to mask out an area of the belt that i want to keep if you then come down to the display properties and click on the double button this will make the object double-sided if you go to your geometry tab and then to modified topology and delete hidden, this will delete any of the hidden mesh that we masked off earlier. 
We're going to open up the dynamics panel once again and just drag it over wherever you want to see it and make sure gravity is off and contact is on and then collision volume is on and then run simulation and it should shrink back to your character like this if it doesn't just to change the inflate and the contract amount. I now want to add some thickness to the geometry so if we come to the geometry tab and come to dynamic subdiv and then increase the thickness you then click apply and then it just makes it thicker. Then if you want to make it smooth just increase the smooth subdivision I do it by one and once again click apply. So now I'm going to quickly create some accessories for my character. I'm going to create those sort of spiky cuffs that are inspired by Chun-Li. I simply take a cylinder and then give it some thickness and then bevel it around the crease edges. With the move tool selected I then just press the unlock icon to reposition the gizmo so it's in the center of the cuff and then I append a cone and just really rudimentally just position it around the cuff itself. In the subtools I just ensure that all the cones are sitting underneath the cylinder layer. I then select the merge tool and then merge everything down into one object. With the cuff accessory completed I just duplicate it and position it on the other side of the character. Okay so let's transfer all these new items of clothing and accessories back to character creator. So just click the all button. I'm going to uncheck the base mesh and only update the clothing items. On the accessory as well I'll change it to accessory rather than update to cloth. Important. I now need to add some skin weights to the clothing. This ensures that the clothing sits on the character correctly, especially when animating. This used to be a laborious task, but now it's a click of a button and it's pretty much done. So I'm just going to go over to the modifier panel and click on transfer skin weights. I'm going to just select the default weight setting and click apply and baby it works like a charm. I just repeat this process for every accessory and piece of clothing on my character. To check the skin weights I just put a default spin motion on her. I'm not worried about the flap on her skirt here because we're going to add physics to that to make it move more naturally. Next we need to UVW unwrap the clothing and the accessories. The quickest and best way to explain what UVW unwrap is, it's a bit like unfolding a cardboard box onto a flat sheet to be able to paint it. The quickest way I can think about unwrapping these clothes is using the UV Master plugin in ZBrush. So back to ZBrush we go. Here. So make sure the dress is selected to go to Z plugins here. I'm just going to drag this entire panel over here to the right so I can see what I'm doing. Come down to UV master and then click on unwrap. And then if you want to check what it's actually done, click on flatten and you can see what it's done here. If you don't like those UVW maps, you can use control painting. If you click on unflatten and go to enable control painting, you've got protect, attract and array. So if you click on protect, you literally just draw on where you want the scene to be attracted to on the dress, which will help ZBrush determine where you want it to be unwrapped. Switching over to protect will indicate to ZBrush where you've painted, you do not want any seams. And lastly, you have a raise which will remove the paint for attract and protect if you've gone wrong. Once you're happy with the areas you've attracted and protected, you can click on unwrap and then go to flatten and it's that easy. Click on unflatten and we then go down to texture map and click on that. And we're going to create a texture map from the UVW map. Go to create and new from UVW map. And as you can see, we've got our UVW map onto our character. Now the next step is to paint this UVW map. You can either shoot it off into Photoshop and paint it by hand. I actually prefer that method, or you can use poly paint. Looking at her body shape, it's still too realistic. So I'm going to go in and change the morph sliders to give her a bit more of a cartoonish body shape. Our character still has some super realistic feet, but nevertheless, we are going to put some boots on that. So to complete this character, I'm just going to grab some boots I purchased from Real Illusions content store. However, I'll probably go and make these boots myself later on down the line. It just kind of speeds things up and allows me to get into the animation process a lot quicker. I also just came into the base color and just changed the boots to white to suit the theme. I was just about to pose the character and realize she doesn't have any pants on. So we're gonna save her dignity and grab some pants and pop them on. 
I didn't complete the challenge. It's gone over an hour now. I'm going to continue with the tutorial and get us into Blender and ready to animate. I will, however, do this tutorial again with another character and do it in an under an hour on my live stream on my Patreon. But then I'm going to complete this tutorial for you, even if it takes me 20 minutes more, because we're not far off. So we move. Next, I went to the edit pose dialog to get the character into a pose before I bring her into Blender. I simply click on the circles that correspond to the bones in the body. And then it's all about rotating and moving each part to where I need it. I'm going to put her in some sort of kind of playful pose. Maybe she's about to kick, but with her fists together. It's not the most dynamic pose, but it's a quick and effective alternative to just the T pose for importing into Blender. Now I'm going to put an expression on my character's face via the edit facial dialog. This is where the magic happens for the character's expressions. I can tweak the expressions part by part or start with a default expression and then modify it. The control is all in the sliders. This feature is especially valuable for animations and fine tuning visims and expressions. But for now, I'm going to keep it simple and just give her a smile on her face. And that's it. We're all set to go into Blender. We're going to quickly install a plugin which will allow us to import our character creator characters into Blender with complete control and ease and it also will convert our rig to a Rigify rig. This is an absolutely free plugin and the developer, I believe his name is Victor Soupday and the link to his GitHub is in the description below. All you need to do is go and find the source file over here and click the zip file and download the zip file. Do not under any circumstance unzip the zip file, you just want to keep it as it is go back to blender go to edit preferences add-ons from the left toolbar and then install on the top toolbar and simply navigate to that cc blender tools.zip that we just downloaded and click on install add-on just type cc in the search box and just and just check the box if it's not checked already with the character creator blender pipeline plugin ready to go we'll hit the n key or just click the little arrow up here this opens up the cc pipeline panel it's basically the control center for everything we're about to do. Under the import section, click on lighting, physics and rigify, and then click on import character. A couple of cool things that have happened is that your rig has been converted into a rigify rig. As you know, that is compatible with Blender and all the skin weights have been transferred across perfectly, as you can see here with all the morph blends as well, which is very nice. But this gift has not finished giving. I'm just gonna put in a quick backdrop here and plop in the camera. I'm now ready to show you the amazing scene tools. So if you go down to scene tools, you can switch between the scene lighting and each one of these will give you a different set of lighting parameters. This is really cool because you can use this as a template and go in and edit these lights individually. It just gives you a head start with everything, having the lighting rigs pre-made. Let's quickly visit the material parameters here. So this is a front end UI for the shaders tab up at the top. You can change the mouth ambient occlusion, the nostril ambient occlusion, the lips, the roughness, the specular, the micro roughness, all the individual parts as well. Essentially Character Creator has built you a node shader. So if you want to check that out, you just go to the shading tab and have a look in there. Yes, I know it's a little bit messy and I uh, would probably go in and adjust this down to four nodes only. But again, it's a fantastic start for somebody who's coming in to try this for the first time and not be overwhelmed. Okay, I must admit that was quite a fast paced tutorial. If you want to go into any more depth and detail, and I'm going to do more lives and question and answers on the patrons. But also if you've got any outstanding questions, please use my comment section below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. I really hope that I've inspired or perhaps given you the confidence to go and try this out. Now I know I'll get the comments, well, you can do this all for free in Blender. That's not the point. Actually, a lot of people watching this video would have attempted to do this all in Blender and got completely stuck in the quagmire. And this is just an easier process of doing it. It might not be free, but sometimes you do have to pay for software. And I am pretty tired now, so I'm gonna go and lie down on the floor. But if you haven't subscribed, please, please, please subscribe to this channel. It would mean the world to me. And if you want to become a patron as well and support this channel, that would be massive. Thank you so much from me to you. Goodbye. And that will do it. Bye-bye.
Oh yeah, I nearly forgot. Could you tag me in your creations? Because I love seeing what you generate from these tutorials. It's always at Prompt Muse on every platform. And again, that will do it. Bye bye.